Hey, hi, Dan the Creator. So today we're going to talk about this book, Seal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon, because I mentioned it in my What's in My Camera Bag video. And it's just a book that I read constantly now. I've read it four or five times. This is actually the second time me buying this book, because the first time I read it so much that it uh, fell apart at the bindings. So I bought it again. So I've got five points for you here. Mark Twain said, there's no such thing as original idea. And I wholeheartedly believe that because everything has been said. Everything has been done. But the saving grace is, it hasn't been done by you. It hasn't been said by you in this current moment in time. No artist wants to be a copycat. Everyone wants to be original, right? There's only one of you. So by being yourself, you are original. You are an amalgamation of all of your experiences, all of your memories. Everything that's happened to you in your life has led you to this moment. And by playing into those things, you're original. I'm original just because I get on here and I speak. No one can say what I say, like how I say it. That's the beauty of it. Originality is such a fickle thing. In today's day and age, we have social media, right? And there's trends and everybody hops on a trend. Shit, I hop on trends. I'm guilty of it. Because no matter what trend I hop on, I'm not going to do it like the next filmmaker because our shots are different. The way I pace it, it's gonna be different. Yes, it may be the same base idea, but the way I tackle it and the way you tackle it are completely different. So at the end of the day, it does not matter if just don't copy bar for bar, shot for shot, band for band. I couldn't help, M for M, sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. As long as you're not copying people exactly, like literally taking their work and pasting it and claiming it as your own, because that's plagiarism, it's a completely different thing as long as you're not doing that you're being original no one truly knows what's going to be good or not but there are people who will show up every day and put in the damn work by showing up every day and putting out things every single day you give yourself infinitely more chances than someone who's not that's the whole point of reps right record edit post shout out chris boosted for that because i've been saying reps forever and to think that i could just as it, that it breaks down into an acronym that I use, crazy. So here's a dope creator, you go check out on his channel. I'll link it down below and put it on the screen. Dope guy, go check him out. I say all that to say, if I just sat on my ass for, actually here, there are two artists. Think, think of this with me, there's two artists. One creates and posts something every single day for 30 days. The next one creates something once a week and puts it out. Who do you think is gonna have more growth in their craft oh wait the the one who posted every day right because he's getting feedback even if it's not from anybody if no one sees that he's now put in 30 different reps that he can then be like oh i can get faster at this thing i can get better at this thing like you just infinitely give yourself more chances to succeed i grew up playing basketball i can't walk into a gym and take five shots and say i'm um, Jason Tatum or LeBron James. No, those guys walk into a gym and take a thousand shots and then go to practice. It's it's that mentality with reps. You can't put out things every once in a while and think that your art is going to grow. No, you have to constantly work it. And I'm not saying that you have to post it. You don't have to be a crazy person like me. I, I post things all the time because I want the feedback from the people, which leads me into point number three. We live in a day and age where two things are true content is king and where you were born doesn't matter if this was 20 years ago being born in bermuda for those of you that don't know me hey hi i'm dion the creative i'm a filmmaker and photographer based in bermuda yes like the triangle no there are not aliens flying around it whatever you're thinking no we're just a normal place in the middle of the ocean had i been at this point in my life in this point in my career 20 years ago the internet wasn't a thing, social media wasn't a thing. I couldn't wake up, take a photo, post it on Instagram, and get feedback from someone in New Zealand. That, that opportunity didn't exist. There are literally people who wished they grew up in this time and era. So use what is at your fingertips. The internet, and this comes with a caveat, the caveat is when you post things on the internet, you open yourself up to haters. And they're gonna come, it's gonna happen. So just prepare yourself to deal with the haters by ignoring them. The internet is meant to be a place of sharing. Point blank period. It connects us in a way that has never been done 
in a time before this. Use it to your advantage. There are literally artists who would kill, who would have killed to be in this position. Don't waste these opportunities. Be the face of inspiration that you wish you had when you started. Be the face of assurance or reassurance to younger you. Coming up in Bermuda, there are people that, that were photographers, filmmakers. Those people existed in Bermuda. But they weren't doing content the way that I wanted to do content. I, I, when I picked up a camera, it was 2016. That's a lie. It was 2014. It was 2014. Very, very early stages of, of YouTube. YouTube only started in 2007, right? It's only been seven years. But then 2016 happens. And Casey Neistat blows up. Peter McKinnon blows up. All these great creators. But none of them looked like me. And it sucked because I wanted to do the things that they were doing, but I didn't think that they were possible. And then I found YC Imaging. And then I found Kofi Yabo. I found people that looked like me, but they still weren't from Bermuda. And it's like, it just, I didn't think it was possible in Bermuda. And one day I just started doing the thing. I started creating what I wanted to see. And it helped so much. It gave me a sense of fulfillment. There were people in Bermuda that I didn't even know that started walking up to me and be like, hey, I love what you're doing. It made me pick up a camera, which is crazy to me because I'm just Dion. I'm just here making things, talking to a camera on the internet. And now I'm what I wanted for myself four to five years ago. Just create what you want to see. You only want people to see what you want them to see or what you need them to see. Because we're, as people, we're constantly filtering out things. Imagine you're sitting in a busy restaurant with a friend. You don't really hear everyone else in the restaurant. You don't listen into their conversations because you're filtering them out. You're worried about the person in front of you. That's what your art needs to be. What I chose to leave out of this is a lot of things. My desk is a goddamn mess right now. It's horrible. But you don't need to see that. What's outside of the frame in terms of filmmaking is just as important as what's on the inside. You know I have lighting. There's one right there. You can see it. I have a light right there. What you don't see is that other light down there. It's the big key light behind me. Because if I was to turn them all off, look at that. You you, you can only see my computer screen. But you get the idea. Read this book. That's my ending takeaway. Like, subscribe, comment. If you've read this book, what's your biggest takeaway? That's it. Peace out.